right, folks, we're about to kick off our chairs. How about we make some noise? Well, good morning, everyone. At this time, we'd like to introduce Lucas Pakraka, who will be singing America the Beautiful before the start of our wheelchair race. The grandson of Ron Pakraka, one of the famous Falmouth Five, Lucas is a recent graduate of Stoughton High School. He plans to attend Loyola Marymount University in the fall to major in theater arts. Everyone, Lucas Pakraka. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Lucas, nice job. Congratulations, Lucas, and thank you for doing that. Folks, we are just one and a half minutes away from the start of our wheelchair competition. To help us start this race will be Anne Marie Thomas up here, Dr. Anne Marie Thomas from Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital of Cape Cod. So we've got about 90 seconds until the start of our wheelchair athletes. Woods Hole, can you give it up for our wheelchair competitors today? We are in our 48th year of our wheelchair division, sponsored by Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital of Cape Cod. What a program it is. We thank Spalding Rehabilitation for its support of this race. And of course, our fantastic title sponsor, ASICS, who is here with a big slew of runners and beautiful shirts that we're all wearing out here today. So a big thank you to our friends from ASICS and a big thank you to you all. Nearly 10,000 runners here lined up in Woods Hole ready to take on the 51st running of the ASICS Falmouth Road Race. We are about 30 seconds away from the start. Correct. One, incorrect. One minute. One, one minute, minute. There you go. Away from the start <laughs> of our wheelchair competition. So TK, yes, it will take them approximately seven minutes to go the entire seven mile distance. <laughs> correct? It's give or take. Depends on the wind. Somewhere between six and eight, I think. Keeping expectations low today, but Vroom, vroom, they move quickly. In fact, they move so quickly that some courses don't even allow chairs on the course because they, That's right. they go they so fly. fast. You know, one update to share with all of you runners, especially if you're getting ready in one of the later fields, we are starting everyone at 9.05. So if you thought you might be starting a few minutes later, all of the mass runners will start on one gun at 9.05. We are just a few seconds away. And Dr. Anne Marie Thomas is here. 15 seconds, 15. Give it up, Woods Hole, for our wheelchair competitors. <laughs> On the horn, athletes. <laughs> and there they, there they go. Thank you very much, Dr. Anne Marie Thomas of Spalding Re Rehabilitation Hospital of Cape Cod. There they go. The arms are pumping, the wheels are turning, and we are underway in Woods Hole. At this time, we'd like to ask our elite women competitors to make their way to the starting line. So, for our world-class field of elite women, please get on the road and get ready, because you're next. All right, folks, and I am headed over to the finish line with those elite women, so come see me at the finish line. Hands up high, big smiles. I'll be looking for you. Let's give it up for our announcer, Fitz. Fitz, great job. Fitz Kohler up here, her first time announcing the Falmouth Road Race, joining us from Florida today. Fitz will be on the lead truck with the women. Now on the home stretch. Riding it out, getting ready. 
All right, uh, we, we are off with our wheelchair division here in the 51st running of the A6 Falmouth Road Race. Um, uh, we're excited to have Fitz is uh, going to be joining us here at the finish line as soon as she gets here um, on uh, one of those press trucks. But uh, those athletes that just headed out there on the wheelchair division, uh, again, we've got some amazing athletes, not only Daniel Romanchuk, the four-time Falmouth Road Race champion and course record holder, Two-time Paralympian with a gold medal in the 400 meters and a bronze medal in the marathon in the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics. He will be out there leading the charge. Uh, followed by him after that, uh, Herman Garrick, the 2021 A6 Falmouth Road Race uh, champion. He was uh, one of those years where uh, he was just a little bit better than Daniel. Uh, he'll be out there as well as um, Creek Schaubert, uh, a five-time Falmouth Road Race champion who lost both legs as a corporal in the South African Army when his unit came under attack in 1987. Uh, he will be out there, an absolutely fabulous athlete who's been on the scene for a very, very long time. And an amazing young man that's out there, um, Delmas Mayo, uh, a local lad out of here at a Jamaica Plain, uh, Massachusetts. I got a chance to meet him last year at the Expo and speak with him. Uh, the 2022 Sports and Spokes Junior Athlete of the Year. And then, um, obviously, on the women's side, uh, Susanna um, Scaroni, just an absolute fabulous uh, athlete, uh, has really, again, as I mentioned, taken over the reins from Tatiana McFadden. Um, Emily Perry, uh, Amelia Perry, sorry, uh, Jenna Fessemeyer, and Hannah uh, Babalola are some of our uh, top athletes here in the wheelchair division. Again, they will be going very fast today. They will be coming down, screaming down the road uh, in just uh, a few minutes, it almost seems like. Rotaries, adaptive athletes program manager. Um, just a quick update on the elite uh, field. field. Uh, Daniel Lomanchuk is ahead. We have another trailer behind. I can't really tell who it is. Um, we are currently passing Knoxville Lighthouse. Two minutes and 50 seconds. He's pretty speedy. Uh, so it's looking like it's going to be Daniel from here on out. And, um, you know, he's going to defend his title most likely, let's hope, um, barring anything that's happening. We were just hearing from. Can you hear me? We were just hearing from Matt from our uh, lead wheelchair vehicle. We'll uh, try to get some more reports on uh, those athletes as they uh, come very fast and furious uh, towards the finish line here in Falmouth Heights. Uh, but we're we're getting ready to see, as you can see on the jumbotron there, our elite women are getting ready to line up. We have some absolutely fabulous athletes out there today. Of course, I was talking earlier about Helena O'Beary. Uh, she won the 5,000-meter World Championships in 2017 and 2019, where she set a championship record of 14 minutes and 21 seconds and was a silver medalist in the 5,000 at the 2016 Rio and 2020 Tokyo Olympics, which were just in 2021, actually. So a uh, really, really fabulous athlete out there in Helen O'Beary. Uh, she will be uh, followed by some of her uh, compatriots out there as well. Um, uh, Evelyn Kimboy, uh, who's actually a USA athlete now, a current student at U Utah Valley University. Uh, she won the 10,000 meters at the 2023 NCAA Outdoor Championships just recently, last spring. Uh, she's definitely going to be in contention. And another Kenyan athlete out there, Cynthia Limo. Uh, she placed second at the IAAF World Half Marathon Championships just a few years ago with a time of 107. So very, very fast. And again, representing the U.S., uh, Emily Sisson. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, currently holds the American, North American um, uh, record for the marathon. She also holds the half marathon record, having beaten her previous record by 19 seconds at the 2023 Aramico Houston half marathon with a time of 66.52. So those athletes are getting ready to start on the line, and we're going to head things back over to the start line with TK and Fitz, or just TK.
At this time, we would like to take a moment of silence to recognize a race legend we lost this year. Rick Hoyt passed away at the age of 61 earlier this year. Rick and his father, Dick, ran 37 consecutive Falmouth road races, the longest consecutive streak of any, more than their 1,000 races completed. In honor of the pioneering father-son duo and Rick, we ask that you please take a moment of silence. Thank you. And now to honor America, it's our national anthem. We'd like to welcome Tasha Whited up here. Tasha lives in Buzzards Bay, where she is a housing officer in the United States Coast Guard. She performs in community theater here in Cape Cod. And last year, she was in Beauty and the Beast, presented by the Falmouth Theater Guild. She is a board member of the Falmouth Running Club, and we invite her to the stage. Tasha, take it away. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Tasha. We are one minute away from the start of the elite women's race. We'd like to invite a special guest up here to the stage who will start the elite women's race on the sound of a horn. Some of you have run a road race before. Some of you have not. Some of you have run a marathon before. Some of you have not. But only one of you has run a marathon in space. And we are joined now by NASA astronaut and a two-time runner of a marathon on the International Space Station. Give it up for Sonny Williams. So astronaut Sunita Williams will sound the horn on race director Dave's watch, and away the women will go. Hey, Woods Hole, let's give it up for our elite women here from the world over, headed to Falmouth. Try to catch them, you may, and you will not. We wish them well, and we are just moments away from the start of the elite women's race. We are, how many moments? 15 seconds to be exact. We'll give the sign, we'll give the horn, and away they will go. There they go. Give it up, Woods Hole. I'll tell you what, they're off to a good start. <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Dave. At this time, we'd like to invite the elite men out onto the street, as well as our duos. So we ask that the uh, elite men coming out into the street just follow the guidance of the race team on the road. And there go the women. Off they go. I tell you what, no one is catching them today. No one. 
So once again, runners, if you are just planning out your morning, this is a little different this year, uh, there will be one start at 9.05. So in years past, we've broken you up by two, two and a half minutes. All right, so the women are off, the elite women are off, and uh, as we know, we are the wheelchair athletes are already out there. Uh, just some more background on some of our athletes out there. Again, we keep mentioning Daniel Romanchuk. We expect him to be leading the field out there. Uh, the uh, current world record holder in the 800 meters. He's also the youngest to win the Boston Marathon in 2019. I had the pleasure of working for that event at that time and, and meeting that young man as he came out and stormed onto the scene and was the first American to win since 1993 uh, that year. Uh, again, Herman Garrick will be probably uh, close behind if we kind of look at the stats from the mile race uh, on Friday night, as well as uh, Krieg um, Schaubert. He has uh, is, is just been on the scene for forever. Um, um, the, his Falmouth history goes all the way back to 2008, uh, where he won in a time of 23.35. So uh, we're hoping to get a... Um, an update uh, uh, from our wheelchair vehicle to get a little bit uh, uh, to, of a scene of what's kind of going on on the wheelchair. All right, yeah, so this is Matt again from the wheelchair truck. Uh, Daniel is just blown past the crowd. Um, we just are on surf drive right now, um, turning almost at the harbor right now. Um, he's on a crazy pace. It is a tailwind, so I think that's really helping him out. I think we could see a course record today from Daniel. Um, as a reminder, he has the course record from 2019 of 2158, and um, I think he's on pace to win that, uh, beat that, just because of the uh, the tailwind today that he has. It's really nice, um, and yeah, there's I don't see anyone behind him. I know you said Herman Garrick possibly. I definitely think that's a possibility. Uh, Miguel Jimenez is definitely another one. So um, yeah, and then uh, Susanna Scroni, I believe, is already through mile three, mile four. So she's she's also you know, competing for a course record today. So it should be a good uh, end result. That sounds great. We're, we're excited to welcome Daniel. Uh, at that kind of pace, his, his, his course record is basically about three minutes a mile. So if you can imagine how fast three minutes a mile is, but with that tailwind, uh, we do expect a very fast race. We're going to get a report from Fitz. She was at the start line with TK. She jumped on the women's vehicle, and she's going to be reporting on some of these fast women that are out on the course already and screaming their way towards Falmouth Heights. Fitz, uh, can we get an update? Absolutely. So they've taken off hardcore as predicted by these this group of world class athletes, world champions, NCAA champions from cross country, track, five K distance, marathons. They're just the perfect, perfect batch of women. As predicted, Emily Sisson is out in front. It looks like Emma Grace Hurley's next to her. Helen O'Beary at her side. Molly Seidel leading the way as well. So we have probably about a dozen women up front and a handful behind them and then there's a few uh trailing behind but they're they're on the move this is going to be a tight competition because i don't see any of them letting off and that sounds great uh thank you fitz for that update we'll be uh hearing from her later on in the morning um uh, again uh some really just amazing uh, uh female athletes out there um out, out on the course here today and then uh, TK is going to be at the start line. We're going to hear from him in just a little bit about this men's field. But just to kind of give you a little bit of a uh, background on some of these athletes, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Sam Chilengo, uh, a USA athlete uh, originally from Kenya. Uh, he uh, finished eighth in the 2021 Olympic trials in the 10,000, which followed by a win from the 2021 Peachtree Road Race. So he's definitely a contender, not only on the track, but on the roads. Uh, Wellesley Kiptu, the 2021 NCAA Indoor Champion in the 5,000 meters, ran for Iowa State and a seven-time All-American in cross-country and track. Again, when you get these athletes that are versatile on the track, on the roads, on cross-country, cross especially cross-country, those typically have some of your better uh, athletes out there. John Career, uh, the 2021 winner of the Los Angeles Marathon, very strong athlete. Um, Career was also the runner-up at the historic Utica Boilermaker 15K breaking a nearly 18-year-old course record in the process recently. So he's definitely going to be a contender. And uh, we also have Clayton Young, a 2019 NCAA champion in the 10K, eight-time All-American, who's run about 101 for the half marathon. So again, another very, uh, very fast athlete, along with some other Kenyan athletes out there. So the men are going to be starting. You see them on the Jumbotron there. Um, they're going to be uh, kind of lining up, and they're going to get the start. And then they mentioned earlier before... Uh, 
in previous years, we've had athletes that uh, start in waves, uh, but it looks like today we're going to go ahead and start all of our athletes off at about 9.05, uh, the one big mass start. Uh, so if you have anybody at the start line that you may think <laughs> didn't get that news, make sure you send them a quick message and make sure that they're ready to go at 9.05, and we're going to have the whole horde of 10,000 athletes uh, chasing down these elites as they come screaming in here to Falmouth Heights. We've already got a great crowd here. How's everybody doing out here this morning? I can't hear you. Come on, give it to me a little bit more. Nice, nice. I want that excitement to really build up for these athletes um, as, they, as they come into the finish line. Again, we expect to find Daniel Romanchek coming down this hill probably in the next five or ten minutes. So we'll have to make sure that the road is nice and clear. We got the flag blowing. Uh, we got the folks out. We got the sun out. We got the breeze out. It's going to be a wonderful morning here at the 51st running of the Falmouth Road Race, sponsored by ASICS. Ocean. Live your life. Welcome to Woods Hole, everybody. We are just a few minutes away from the start of the elite men's race here at the 51st running of the ASICS Falmouth Road Race. You all look beautiful today. Everyone got a nice good night's rest. You feel like a million bucks. This race is yours. Martinez Evans is going to join, up, join us up here. He is the starter of the, of the men's race today. Be holding the air horn. Martinez is the author. He is an author, and he's the founder of Slow AF Run Club. Martinez is going to get in the race today with you all. You can find him on Instagram. It's the 300-pound runner. <laughs> is this your first air horn, Martinez? All right. You look, you look like you've done this a few times. Well, you know, I'm, yeah. I always look <laughs> Hello, all you beautiful people. We have one minute until the start of the elite men's race. Now, remember, the elite men will start, uh, but we have another wave at 9.03. That is our, those are our seated athletes and our duos. And then at 9.05 is when you all start. So you'll hear the horn here at 9 o'clock. But don't, don't just push up on the people in front of you yet. This is for the elite men. Hey, Woods Hole, let's give it up for these elite men. Ten seconds to the start of the elite men's race. Martinez is here to sound the horn. There they go. The elite men are off. Martinez Evans, Slow AF Run Club. Great job on the start, my friend. Martinez is going to get in as well. Good luck in the run today, Martinez. And so now. And how many seated folks are there? All right, well, we are here at the finish line, and we have an absolutely amazing update. Right now, Daniel Romanchek is on pace to go about 21.07, which will obliterate his already course record by almost a minute. We've got some of these lead vehicles coming down right now. So we expect Daniel to come hauling down this hill any minute, this tailwind has definitely given him a huge advantage on that course record that he already owns at 21.58. We'll start to hear some of the applause probably from the folks at the top of the hill. But again, estimated time right now for Daniel to finish is 21.07, which would break his record by over 50 seconds. We have got uh, some of our, our folks here at the finish line that are going to be holding the brake tape. Stephen Patrick and Amanda Schumann, who are going to be holding our finish line tape for Daniel. Stephen joined Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital in October 1992 and currently serves as a chief development officer for the Spalding Rehabilitation Network. 
Amanda is the Director of Leadership Programs, Events and Special Events at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. And we hear the applause, and I'm ready to get sight on Daniel right now. Here he comes, folks. Give it up. Daniel Romanchek, your winner of the 51st ASICS Falmouth Road Race. What? Wow, he was coming down fast. 21-19 is his time. If that holds, that he will be breaking his own course record by 40 seconds, folks. Give it up for Daniel Romanchek. Absolutely fabulous time. I, geez, I, I, I'm, I'm stunned here. I, I'm honestly stunned here. That was just such a, an amazing time. Obviously, the wind had a lot to do with it, but just you have to be a fabulous athlete to be able to push that chair that fast, uh, uh, especially on this course. It's not the easiest course in the world, but with that tailwind, I'm sure it helped with that course record. Again, unofficially right now, 21-19. His record was 21.58, so he just obliterated his own course record. Um, we're hoping to see where our second place athlete should be coming uh, close in here. Um, if um, we get shot, do we do we know Matt if we're um, if it's Krieg or if it's Hermann who may be following Daniel out there? Yeah, I mean based on the mile races we saw the other night and uh, just what I saw at the beginning, I mean it could be Herman Garrick, it could be Miguel Jimenez Vergara. Um, they both were competing very well, but um, I just think, yeah, I mean, Daniel's on a class of his own. I mean, that was like an absolute <laughs> clinic that he just put on. Um, just watching that from first person, it was crazy. I mean, he led from mile one all the way through. Um, so that was, that was an insane feat right there. Course record, if it holds, um, unbelievable. I tell you what, if you do get a chance to meet Daniel at some point in time, get a photo with him and just tell him to put his arms out wide. It's literally like, a, I mean, a raptor, you know, with his arms. It's just he's got the wingspan that really is the power behind uh, his performances, and it's, it's, it's truly amazing. He could probably hug you twice. Uh, but uh, I, I just had such a great pleasure watching his career develop um, ever since he won that first Boston Marathon in 2019. But again, we've got the experience of Krieg out there, uh, Harriman, and, and as well as Miguel, uh, uh, as you mentioned from the results from the mile on Friday. Um, uh, we still expect some really good athletes. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, it's fantastic out there. I mean, that was Daniel's fifth Falmouth championship. Um, you know, he really um, just absolutely crushed it. Um, and Susanna Scaroni, I believe, is going to be our first woman. She was through mile five or mile six when we pulled in. Um, so she should be coming in any moment, I believe. Um, yeah, her estimated time is about 24.16. Uh, we'll try to get an idea of where that is for a course record. Uh, actually, be, it would be a course record of about a minute. So. Uh, but besides these wheelchair athletes out there, obviously we've got the elite women that are probably uh, getting pretty deep into the course right now. So we're going to get a report from Fitz. How's it going out there? Flinching. They have not stopped for beautiful photos. They have not stopped at Golden's. We still have Helen O'Beary is right up front with Kalavi. We have Sutton of Geno, get it to Emily Sisson is in the middle of the lead pack, which has dwindled to about 10 athletes. Molly Seidel has fallen off a little bit, but um, they they are running fast. And it's uh, Kalavi and O'Beary shoulder to shoulder. They have been side by side, side by side the whole time, and uh, there's, a group, there's a group of about seven just hanging with them, but they still are running strong. All right, so we apologize to Susanna Scaroni. When we were hearing from Fitz, she came screaming down uh, in the finish and actually finished to look like third overall behind Miguel um, Vergara. Um, she ran her unofficial time, 24.33, also obliterates the course record by about a minute, her own course record of 25.30. So congratulations to Susanna. Big round of applause, big round of applause for Susanna Scaroni, our champion here of the A6 Falmouth Road Race. And uh, we're going to uh, head things back over to the start line uh, for TK. TK, you there? Don't forget to breathe. Go get them. Go get them. We'll see you at the finish line.
Tana Farber in the house. Run Brigham, Spalding in the house. So many great charities out here. Tasha's on her way. She ran, she sang the anthem. Now she's running the race. A little double dip. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you at the finish line. I mean, how many races do you have people sitting on the roof cheering you on? All right, we're going to get a report from our men's lead vehicle. Tony Revis is on there on the lead vehicle. Tony, how's it going on there with the elite men? Place, but Wesley Gibbs, who is flying. 417, first mile. All right, that was uh, Tony Revis on our men's lead vehicle. Again, if anything is to show us how today's going to be with this tailwind, we expect some very, very fast times. Officially, for Daniel Romanchek, 21-23 is his official finishing time. Again, breaking that course record of his by about 35 seconds. Second place, Miguel Jimenez Vergara in 24-32. Um, and then Herman Garrick, officially 25-11. That's our top three men wheelchair. And then Susanna Scaroni, again, officially 24-39. Her course record was 25-30, coming in from 2022. So she obliterates that course record as well. So. Big, big ups for those athletes that have already finished. We've already got course records out here today. We're expecting some fast times from our elite men as well. And as you can see on that Jumbotron, 10,000 eager athletes that are all help, hoping to set their own personal records out here um, in the 51st running of the A6 Falmouth Road Race. Um, as we mentioned before, the history of, of Falmouth, founded by Tommy Leonard in 1973, and started at that Captain Kid restaurant in Woods Hole that we saw earlier, and ending at the Brothers Four Night Club in Falmouth Heights. Now we finish here at beautiful Shipwrecked, where they're gonna be hosting the uh, After Party Bash. Uh, make sure you stop by there. That first race attracting less than 100 runners. Since then, it's grown to be one of the premier running events of the summer, with 10,000 runners participating and thousands applying for the random selection process in hopes of gaining a spot as we once again welcome another one of our wheelchair athletes. Uh, that is Rafael Baccio from Ghana, who just came across the finish line there. And we were talking again about all these fabulous uh, uh, um, athletes out here, wheelchair. We have our duo athletes out here. The late Dick and Rick Hoyt, Hoyt were the first duo team to compete in hundreds of races but held their longest road race streak here at Falmouth Road Race with a record 37 races completed. And since that first race was held, Falmouth Road Race has served as a fundraiser for local charities and organizations. We'll be talking throughout the day about all these wonderful charities that are out here raising a massive amount of funds uh, throughout the year uh, in preparation for this event. As we welcome yet another wheelchair athlete through the finish line, That was Craig, yes? And one of our other top female athletes, Amelia Perry from Colorado Springs coming through. So we're, those are gonna be coming in. We have a smaller field with the, uh, with the uh, wheelchair athletes. But we have a tremendous field in the elite athletes uh, and we're gonna be getting some reports. Uh, Tony Revis from the men's vehicle. Uh, but right now we're gonna start we're gonna head out to our women's lead vehicle and see if Fitz has a good report on how the elite women field is shaping up. Take it away, Fitz. Number one right behind her, Dariba. We've got Bacotti behind her, Kalati, and Limo. Emily Sisson has fallen at least 15 yards behind, and Helen just looks like Helen O'Beary, number one, and uh, she she's swerving it a little bit, looking to see if anyone wants to take the lead, but right now it's it's her race to lose, and her race to give away if she wants to. She is very powerful, and again, the crowd is spinning out. It's O'Beary, Dariva, Vakoti, Kalati, Limo, and a bit behind, Emily Siffin. Just past mile four. 
All right, uh, again, those elite women at mile four, they're a little past halfway. And as we suspected, Helen O'Beary um, is gonna try to run away with this thing. There's a little bit of a cat and mouse that kind of usually goes on in the first three or four miles, uh, but we expect uh, Helen to pull away. Uh, it's unfortunate to hear Emily has dropped off a little bit, uh, but we expect her still to hold on strong for a great race as again, we continue to welcome our wheelchair athletes across the finish line here, uh, leading the charge of this field of 10,000, uh, plus all of our elite athletes. Um, on the men's side, we ho hope to get an update soon from Tony Revis. And uh, um, we're gonna uh, head off to Tony right now in the men's vehicle and see if we can get a little bit of an update from the men's vehicle, Tony. All right, well, we, we will, uh, we're trying to get a hold of Tony out there. We, uh, we know sometimes there's some dead spots with the technology this, uh, this day and age, even with everything advanced as we're watching the Jumbotron and all of these mass athletes coming through. It's such a beautiful scene. I prefer those mass starts where you could just see hordes and hordes of runners for seemingly miles as they come across the start line on their goal of completing uh, today's race from Woods Hole here to Falmouth Heights. Um, but again, uh, just to kind of go over a couple more of some of these elite men that are out there today, Patrick Dever uh, from Great Britain. He's the, um, he was first place finish and meet record in the NCAA 10,000 meter national championships with a time of 21, uh, 2741 recently. Uh, and he's now representing Puma. Uh, he competes in the 5,000 and 10,000, uh, as well as obviously road races and cross country. We got David Bett, who's a world junior champion in the 5,000 meters uh, back in the day and world youth champion silver medalist in the 3,000 meters in 2009. So this is a, a young man who's definitely uh, blossomed into um, a great athlete. He was third here last year and fifth in 2019, as well as representing USA Andy Bayer, who was actually our rabbit for our uh, men's mile on Friday night. He's a 2012 NCAA 1500 meter champion. So this kid's got some speed. Again, we're welcoming some more of our elite wheelchair athletes as they come down the finish line here. We're really excited to have you at the finish. We've got our top athletes that are heading on over to our, uh, our, our awards booth for the awards ceremony. Um, Edwin Kurgott, another one of our top male athletes out there on the field, a 10-time All-American at Iowa State, and uh, Kurgott was a 2019 cross-country champion with a time at, uh, with a 10K time of 30:32. Again, another fast individual out there. So a lot of great uh, male athletes out there. Female athletes will keep getting reports from Fitz from the women's vehicle, and we'll try to get a hold of Tony from the men's vehicle. Mark. Mark, yes. I'm down here with Daniel Romanchuk, our wheelchair champion. Daniel! Our fifth time champion. Daniel, take us through it. You had the tailwind, a 50-second PR again, so congratulations. Yeah, thank, about it. thank you. It's uh, just a, a great morning out here, uh, nice and cool. Um, and yeah, with that tailwind, is just, uh, you know, give it everything and uh, see, see what happens. That's awesome. Congratulations, Daniel, on your fifth. And Susanna, take us through your second title here. Um, yeah, you know, like Daniel said, beautiful morning, um, tailwind, uh, can't get a better course on this, and so very blessed to be here, and for a really fast day. Awesome. Congratulations to both of you. We have the awards now. Third place, we gotta go fast, we only have time. Okay, in third place, in the men's division, Herman Garrick. <laughs> Second place, Miguel Jimenez Vergara. And our five-time champion, give it up for Daniel Romanchuk.
And on our female wheelchair division, in third place, Hannah Babalola. In second place, Emmy Perry. When you do first place, everyone gets a Falmouth Road Race pendant from Gilded Oyster. And our champion once again, the great Susanna Scaroni. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Scott. Scott Gelfi uh, down there on the roads with our award ceremony. We're going to uh, try to cut real quick to fits on the female uh, uh, lead vehicle and get a report from those amazing ath athletes out there. Fitz? All right. So once we pass mile four, Helen O'Berry said, game on. She shoved it into fifth gear, and she just broke away from the pack. I just We just passed mile five, and she actually looked over her shoulder and couldn't find anybody because there was no one behind her. Now, Limo and Kaladi were number two and three. I think Emily Sisson is pulled back into fourth place. But, I mean, Obiri has to take a nap to lose this thing. She is pulled so far ahead, and she is running so strong. And in her mind, she's probably saying, yep, I'm a world champion, and I've won titles. This is going to be another one I bring home. Mark, I want to give a... Mark, Mark, I want to give a shout out to the Gilded Oyster who donates all of the awards for the Elite and Wheelchair Division. They're a Main Street uh, jeweler and uh, a great sponsor of ours. So shout out to Gilded Oyster. That's great, yes. We're going to have uh, all of our top athletes. We'll be getting those uh, throughout the day. So uh, we're really excited to be able to present those out here today. And again, Scott Galfi down on our road with our all of our award ceremonies throughout the weekend. And we're going to have a little bit of fun as all of these athletes come screaming down this hill to the finish line in Falmouth Heights. Um, again, our women, they have... Uh, they have passed, it looks like our men actually have passed 5K in about 1338. That is absolutely an amazing time. I hope I'm reading that right. Wellesley Kiptu has passed 5K in 1338. Uh, that's just a fabulous time. That's a, that's a smoking time on the track, much less on the roads. John Career uh, came through in 1350 along with Edwin Kurgott in 1350. So they're about, looks like Kip 2's got about a 12 second lead on the pack. Uh, Helen O'Beary came through 5K in 16 minutes. Again, very fast. I don't know if anybody out in this field's run 5K on the track, but 16 minutes in the middle of a race is pretty impressive. It looks like there's a pack of about five athletes at least. Kaladi, uh, Dariba, uh, Chip, Chip Gano, as well as Ketchichu. Uh, we're going to try to, it looks like we've got Tony Revis from the men's lead vehicle, so let's toss it out to Tony. All right, official vehicle. Way to go, Doctor. All right, so we keep trying to get a hold of Tony. Uh, we'll try to figure out again. We're getting, luckily, live reports here on my laptop here at the finish line, so we'll try to keep you up to date on how that's kind of going, but again, Last uh, uh, checkpoint at 5K, it looked like Wilson Kip too, um, had about a 12 second lead on the field. His expected time, 30.42, which would be an absolutely amazing time out here today. Um, again, just a little bit of a history um, for uh, the event out here. Over $16 million in estimated economic impact is generated by the event through purchases made at local businesses, lodging, and overall tourism brought to Falmouth each year. Every year I come here, it just seems like everything's around. I, I talk to locals out here and they tell me, uh, this is bigger than Christmas, bigger than 4th of July, bigger than New Year's. Uh, this, is, this is definitely your event and it's so great to, to be welcomed here every year at, at Falmouth. It truly is, takes over the city takes over the people and I'm really excited to be here every year. And since 2012, the Falmouth Road Race, uh, which is a 5013C, has given back over 4.7 million to this community in the form of scholarships to graduating high school seniors, grant awards, donations to volunteer groups who support the race, sponsorships of local events, and the completion of various large projects to benefit the town 
i.e. this beautiful new track at Falmouth High School. So again, more wheelchair athletes coming on in here. That was William Lear from Shelter Island, New York. Um, but again, this race is just, it's just absolutely amazing impact. And we've talked about the numbers for nonprofits program. Um, uh, through that program, the race has helped raise over $56.5 million to date for charities and organizations based here in Massachusetts. Here we got Maddie Wilson there, Mark. All of 14 years old. Her last race in her pink wheelchair. I, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss the pink wheelchair there, Scott. i got to admit. I know, but it's been great to see Maddie grow up. I was with her the first time when she was seven years old, and we did a test run to make sure she can finish. And uh, on our bikes, we couldn't even keep up with her. So uh, I think she uh, let us know that she was ready at seven. So uh, it's been great to see her develop and grow up. So do, do we have an idea of the new color, or is it, uh, are we just going to, what are we going to go with next I year? I think it's a big surprise. It's going to oh, have an unveiling. We're going to have to have a whole unveiling, you know, like the, the, like the birth, the gender reveal kind of thing. I, I, I think so. Let's do that. That's definitely going to be a part of the program, maybe part of the uh, Friday night festivities next year at the mile races. I, I think maybe a little Asics Falmouth Road Race logo on it, perhaps. Oh, I, I, I see that. I see that. Maybe get the colors in there, the blue and the red. Uh, I, we love it. I Absolutely like it. love it. Uh, again, you know, just to thank all these amazing sponsors out here that we have today. Of course, our our our, our main sponsor that we have, uh, Asics, uh, Rockland Trust, Stop and Shop, Cooked Perfect, Cape Cod Radio, all of these uh, great uh, um, uh, sponsors. I'll be calling through all of these throughout the day. Uh, the Gilded Oyster we talked about um, with these awards out here, and uh, Spalding Rehabilitation, Falmouth Hospital, Boston Beer Company, what have you. But it looks like we're going to be expecting these top women out here. They've already hit 10K. Uh, Obiri, with 30-second lead, came through 10K in 31.14 for 10K. I don't know if you've run a 10K lately on the roads, but 31.14 is a smoking time. Her estimated time is going to be about 35.12. Uh, we'll get a try to get a check on how that compares to the course record. I believe that's got to be pretty close, if not very much well under the course record. So we expect her to be coming up over the hill any second now. Again, she's past 10K, which is 6.25 miles. So she's got uh, uh, probably about a half a mile to go, maybe about two or three minutes as we welcome uh, Helen O'Beary, the uh, de facto A6 Falmouth Road Race champion as soon as we get sight of her uh, coming up over the hill. Uh, looks like we had our women's lead vehicle come through here, so I'm expect to be joined by Fitz up here at the booth soon. As I say it, she snuck up on me on the side. And we'll see if we can get a little bit of a download from her as she watched uh, that race unfold on the women's side. Again, we're still waiting for the men to hit the 10K point, but uh, looks like uh, similar to the women's race, uh, we've got a clear leader in Wellesley, Kiptu, who had about 12 second lead uh, through 5K. He's probably going to extend that lead. Again, uh, not only with all these wonderful sponsors out here, but of course uh, our volunteers out here, 2,000, nearly 2,000 volunteers. Um, and uh, we've got uh, our volunteer of the year, Annette and Joe Messina. Big ups to uh, Annette and Joe for being volunteers of the year. If you see them uh, uh, near the info tent at the finish line, be sure to thank them for all their years of service. And a big shout out to our volunteer managers, Carrie and Brian Brody. Give it up for doing yet again another fantastic job. I think she's coming over the hill oh, there, uh, Mark. Go. Be ready. All right, guys. So I had the luxury of riding in the press truck in front of this woman who almost caught the press truck a few times. She knows that she is the 2023 Boston Marathon champion. She is about to become the champion of the 2023 ASICS Falmouth Road Race and the official queen of Massachusetts, Helen O'Berry. Oh, I think we got Emily Sisson coming up next here, down, down, down the hill. Oh. Top American. And Ellen. Emily 
broke past a handful of girls that were in front of her, and Emily says, no, thank you. I'm taking yep. silver. Our Emily American Sisson. Marathon champion uh, record holder right there, Emily Sisson. That was just fabulous. Hearing Sisson fall off the pace early on in the race and to be able to come back to get second is such a wonderful feat. That's right. Cynthia Limo coming in here to round out our top three. Give it up for these wonderful ladies out here today. Absolutely spectacular times that these women have been running out here today, Fitz. We got All Winnie Kalati right. right here. And Kalati, man, she was neck and neck, shoulder to shoulder with Obiri. 80% of this course. Kalati, you did great, amazing effort, ladies. And that's Boozy Dariba coming in as well. But Cody Ch Django. Fiona O'Keefe. Woo! Rounding out, that looks to be about sixth place for our women. So we've got our top six women on in here. Uh, Fitz, talk to us a little bit quickly about how you kind of saw that race unfold. Was it literally just so beery from the start? Well, she was up front. In fact, Emily Sisson was up in front for a little bit, but Whoa, they stayed we got in our a big bronze pack. medalist. Oh, Molly! Our bronze medalist! Molly, Molly Suttle! American treasure right there. Boy, did that woman make a name for herself uh, uh, in recent years. And it's just so great to see Molly out here uh, uh, running out here today. That's right. And not only is she fast, but she's so much fun. Such a delight. We had Yumi Yashikawa from Japan and Everland Kemboy. And we got Evie Kemboy just finishing. Just yeah, it just it just seemed like uh, uh, like Helen just, uh, you know, I, I, wanna, I almost say Obiri, obliterated, <laughs> obliterated the field out there today. And just took it right from the start. I mean, did she mm -hmm. did you she even sit back at all? Uh, she did. She did. She ran in the pack for a couple of miles. And then it was mile four where she just said, all right, enough. Here I go. And she took off. In mile four, she brought this mega yeah. distance. And then by the time we got to mile six in the press truck, I think we kicked it into about 82 miles per hour. And Helen was still coming down on us. I mean, she's just fast, merciless. And I like it. We got Rakua, get at you. Fantastic performance. She was in the top pack up until about mile five. And Emma Grace Hurley, incredible athlete. I believe I just saw her compete in Canton, Ohio last month at the USATF Women's 6K Championship. So that was the Fierce. men's lead vehicle that just kind of came through near the finish line. So that means they've pulled away from the men. The men have, in fact, passed 10K. Oh, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, Wellesley Kiptu came through 10K in 27.34. That is an absolutely ridiculous time out here today. He's got about a 21-second lead over Edwin Kurgat. 27.34 on the roads is just, it blows my mind. That, that would win, that could win a world championship on the track. So we expect to see very fast times from our men's field. Ah, so we just... We'll wait to get uh, confirmation on those record times. We may have, we already have two course records from our men's and women's wheelchair Is event. Is that right? Yes, uh, Daniel Romanchek by almost like 30 seconds. Scaroni by also about 30 or 40 seconds. They broke the, the, broke the course record. Hey, Bridget Bellew from Noonan, Georgia. Sweaty Southerner like me, I like it. You know what we call this in the South? We call this winter. <laughs> we got Momoka Kawaguchi from Japan. Kimberly Krasnowski from Canada. Michaela Rivera Riverton. So our course record in the men is 3108, and right now Kip Two is on pace for 3104. So he's going to be really close. Okay. Heads up! Is this him right here? This is Heads him right up. here. Oh, oh, Kip Two, Wellesley Kip Two, 3108 is the course record time. Yes, sir. You he's know going to make it. I think he's going to do it, folks. 2023 A6. Road we'll wait to get officially. He came through the, the call line at 31 seconds. 31.09. Oh, oh my, my goodness. He missed it by one second. 31.09. Missing the course record by just one second. As we see second and third place coming on in here. Racing for the top three. 
That's that John Career and Edwin Kurgot and coming through. I watched John Career win the LA Marathon a couple years ago. Fantastic champion. Oh my goodness, to miss the course record by one second. Hey, but you know still, what, an absolutely fabulous for. time. Next absolutely. year, course record. Kaylee DeLay from Seattle and Gracie Griffith from Atlanta. So our women's side, the course record was 35.02. So Abiri just missed it by about 10 seconds herself. As we welcome Clayton Young and David Kiprotich Bet is coming across the finish line there, rounding out our top five athletes on the men's side. Karen Kudavade from Eugene, Oregon. A lot of our elite men now coming, screaming down this line. Everybody running fabulous times. Hala Selassie coming through here. And look at these smiles. There's Sam Chalenga representing the U.S. One of our top U.S. athletes, Olympics, World Championships, all Amen kinds of stuff. Kimboy. So we've got the course records on the wheelchair side. We just missed course records on our male and female side. But all in all, that tailwind clearly uh, gave us some fast times here today, Fitz. I don't know. I don't know if we can blame any of this on the wind. They are just <laughs> so flipping powerful. They're just, they're just very, very strong athletes. And uh, we'll, uh, we're, we're going to be really excited to have those athletes presented with these wonderful awards. Scott Gelfie will be down there soon gathering those athletes along with Jennifer um, as we uh, congratulate and um, put the medals on our top three men and women. Colin call, Beanie call coming Benny, in. Colin Benny from Massachusetts. Syracuse NCAA champion. Nice, nice. Welcome, Colin. Andy Bear. Andy Bear, our rabbit from uh, Friday Night's Miles, coming on in here. And one of your people, Mark. Oh, Barry Atua. So we looks like we're gathering our top female athletes down here with Scott. Scott, take it away. Who do you got? Yeah, Mark. So I have our uh, first and second place women right here. First place, we got Helen O'Berry. Helen, how was it out there? You got a little tailwind. Your first time here to Falmouth. What'd you think? It's my first time to be here, and actually I can say the crowd was so amazing on the way, and the course was so beautiful. Hope to come here next year. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Helen. And we're with our USA Marathon record holder here with Emily Sisson. Emily, second place, your first time here. What'd you think? I, I loved it. It was a beautiful course, great competition, great day for it, too. Yeah, I had a fun time. And uh, you fell off the lead a little bit, and then you came back, and uh, did you have a shot at Helen there? My goal is to get as close to Helen as I could today. So, um, yeah, I'm in the middle of marathon training right now, so I got dropped a bit in the hills when uh, they started running five-minute miles. But then my goal was just to focus on the women ahead and try to reel them in. And I had good advice from my host this morning to finish hard over the last hill and, and close it uh, fast. So that's what I tried to do. Hey, awesome. Emily. Congratulations, Emily. Emily. We'll start the awards here. I think our third place, uh, Cynthia Limo, she's in the medical tent right now. So we're gonna go to um, our awards with the top two right now. Hey Scott, I got a question for Emily. You mind giving her back that oh, microphone? Emily, Fitz has a question for you if we can ask. When, I'm over here. She's like, where is she, the voice in the sky? When exactly did you make the pass into second? Because when I passed num mile marker six, you were still in fifth. So you must have, like, where did that come from and where, where did it happen? It was, I think, just around 10K maybe, but it was right as we were going into the headwind, so I kind of regretted it a little bit, but I, <laughs> I tried just to finish strong. Pain is temporary. Congratulations. Awesome. So we'll get our awards going. Jennifer, we ready here? So um, our third place award winner, Cynthia Limo. She's in the medical tent right now, so hopefully she's okay. And our second place, uh, and our first American, Emily Sisson. And our new champion, Boston Marathon champion as well, here in Falmouth, Helen O'Beary. The queen of Massachusetts. Nice finish, look at these guys coming through. Billy and Alex. Henry Gartner from Falmouth, a oh, local guy. So again, Helen just missed that course record by about 11 or 12 seconds. Uh, so uh, the tailwind wasn't quite enough. Maybe next year she'll come back out here and uh, obliterate or obliterate. 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 That's right. That, uh, that course record uh, next year. Hello there, Mr. Kip, too. Congratulations. 
So uh, we've had this record going on for quite some time, I think close to 30 years, and you just tied it. Uh, I, was, I was close, actually, but uh, I got up the hill, and I, I saw back there was nobody coming. And I was like, let me just celebrate and, and have fun. And I loved the crowd. It was so loud, and I, I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm at home. Aww. That's awesome. You've been here a few years now, your first, tr your first title. So congratulations, Wesley. We hope you're back many years to come. Thanks so much. He just pulled away early on in the race and never looked back. And uh, so fabulous. Uh, again, we, we looked at the time on the screen, and it originally said um, 32 or 3109. And I thought he missed it by a second, but it got adjusted. It matched it. It matched it, 3108. So I don't know how that's going to plan out with his bonuses and all this other stuff. But just an absolutely fabulous time. The, again, the record had stood for such a long time. Uh, for him to come out and even tie it is, is such a huge feat. Right, and he seems so sweet, too. I would like to go give him a hug. Oh, <laughs> okay. Maybe adorable. we can later. Right. So Scott, we're, take we're it away. Have the award, so I might give him a hug down here with the award oh, ceremony. Yeah. So are we ready, Jennifer, for our awards? Once again, our, our third place award winner, Edward Kurgut in 3137. He is actually in the medical tent, just like our female. Hopefully he's okay. Something about third place today. That's I don't right. know what's going on. I don't know, but <laughs> we have our second place winner here in 3134, a blazing time on any other year, John Career. And our new champion who tied the course record in 3108, Mr. Wesley Kiptu. Oh, he's got to get his photos with Scott. He's getting the hug that I asked for. Oh, he's for. getting the hug. Oh, give, it, give him a hug for oh, it. Sean and Seamus Evans coming through there representing the duo squad. Again, the long history of Rick and Dick Hoyt here at Falmouth and in Massachusetts and on globally, really. Uh, and the Evans crew just coming through here to represent our top duo team. And again, another big round of applause for our male champion, our runner-up runner here today. John Career. Fabulous times, fabulous times.